Canto 4 Breaking the deep sleep that filled my head, a heavy clap of thunder startled me up, as though by force. With rested eyes I stood, peering to find where I was, in truth, the lip above the chasm of pain, which holds the din of infinite grief, a gulf so dark and deep and murky that though I gazed intently down into the canyon, I could see nothing below. Now we descend into the sightless zone, the poet began, dead pale now. I will go ahead, you second, I answered, seeing his pallor. How can I venture here if even you, who have encouraged me every time I falter, turn white with fear? And he, it is the pain people here suffer that paints my face this color, of pity, which you mistake for fear. Now on. Our long road urges us forward. And he entered the abysses first in girdling circle and down. He had me enter it too. We, here we in, encountered no laments that we could hear, except for sighs that trembled the timeless air. They emanated from the shadowy sadnesses, not agonies, of multitudes of children and women and men. He said, And don't you ask, what spirits are these? Before you go on, I'll tell you. They did not sin. If they have merit, it can't suffice without baptism, portal to the faith you maintain. Some lived before the Christian faith, so that they did not worship God aright, and I am one of these. Through this, no other fault, we are lost, afflicted only this one way, that having no hope, we live in longing. I heard these words with heartfelt grief that seized on me, knowing how many worthy souls endured suspension in that limbo. Dear sir, my master, I began, wanting to be reassured, in the faith that conquers every error, did Ever anyone go forth from here by his own good, or perhaps another's, to join the blessed after? He understood my covert meaning, and said, I was new to this condition when I beheld a mighty one, who descended here arrayed with a crown of victory, and he recalled back from this place the shade of our first parent, and his son Abel, and, the, and other shades who dwelled. In Limbo Noah and Moses, the obedient giver of laws, went with him, and Abraham, the patriarch, King David and Israel went, and Israel's sire and children, and Rachel, for whom he labored so long, and many others, and his coming here made them blessed and rescued them. Know this. No human soul was saved till these. We did not stop our traveling while he spoke, but kept on passing through the woods, not trees, but a wood of thronging spirits. Nor did we make much distance from the place where I had slept, when I saw a fire that overcame a bleak hemisphere of darkness. Well before we stopped to address them, I could see people there and sense they were honorable folk. O master apt in science and art, who honor both, what wins these shades distinction? Who are they who command a place so separate from the other ones? And he, their honored names, which still resound in your life above, have earned them heaven's grace, advancing them here. Meanwhile, a voice intoned, Hail the great poet, whose shade has left this place and now returns. After the voice fell still, I saw four great shades making their way to us their aspect neither sad nor joyful. Note well, my master began, the one who carries a sword and strides before the others, as fits his role. Among these giants, he is Homer, their lord, the sovereign poet, the satirist follows him, Horace with Lucan last and Ovid third. That lone voice just now hailed me by a name. Each of them shares with me. In such accord they honor me well. And so I saw all come together there, the splendid school of the Lord of highest song, who like an eagle soars high above the others. After they had shared a word among themselves, they turned and greeted me with cordial gestures, at which my master smiled, and far more honor that fair company than made me one among them. 
So as we traveled onward toward the light, I made a sixth amid such store of wisdom. Thus we strolled, speaking of matters I will not give breath, silence as fitting now as speech was there. At length a noble castle blocked our path, encircled seven times by a barrier of lofty walls and defended round about by a handsome stream we strode across. It bore our weight like solid ground, and after that I passed through seven gateways with the sages. We came to a fresh green meadow where we met a group of people, with grave deliberate gazes and manners of great authority. They spoke sparingly and in gentle courtly voices. We drew aside to a place where we could look from a spacious, well-lit height and view them all. On that enameled green I saw, and take glory within me for having seen them, still. The spirits of the great I saw Electra, with many companions, among whom I knew well, with which shades were those of Aeneas and of Hector and Caesar, who wore his armor, falcon-eyed. I saw Camilla and Penthesilia beside her. I saw King Latinus on the other side, and sitting by him his daughter Lavinia. I saw that Brutus from whom Tarquin fled. I saw Lucretia, Julia, Marcia, Cornelia, and sitting at a distance separately, I saw lone Saladin of Arabia. I raised my eyes a little, and there was he who is acknowledged master of those who know, sitting in a philosophic family, and who look to him and do him honor. I saw nearest him, in front, Plato and Socrates. I saw Democritus, who strove to show that the world is chance, Zeno, Empedocles, Anaxagoras, Thales, Heraclitus, Diogenes, the collector of qualities of things, Di Dioscorides, and Orpheus, Cicero, Linus, Seneca, the moralist, Euclid, the ge geometer, Ptolemy, Hippocrates, Galen, Avicinia, Averroes, Averroes, who, discover who discussed the philosopher in his great commentary. I saw so many I cannot tally the list. For my demanding theme so pulls my story, to multiply the telling would be too little for the multitude of, of fact that filled my journey. The company of six divide and dwindle to two. My wise guide leads me from that quiet another way. Again I see the air tremble and come to a part that has no light inside it.